A group of adventurers enter the long-sealed crypt of the Witch Queen Venus. Through a secret entrance, they discovered by deciphering her long-dead vizier's journal. Now they creep along a dank, dark hallway, the air thick with the musk of a hundred centuries. The hallway ends in a huge circular disk marked with the seasons and gods of that long-vanished culture. At the center of the disk, which represented the center of the universe for that culture, was the symbol of the Witch Queen herself, a counter-relief of a scarab beetle. The wizard in the group pulls out a signet ring, the base relief of a scarab beetle, one which matches the carving in the disc exactly. The group had found this ring in the sarcophagus of Venus's arch-rival Serena, who was murdered and mummified on the orders of the Witch Queen herself. Hands trembling, the wizard places the signet ring into the carved relief and it's a perfect fit. Now she prepares to turn the re- Oh, wait a minute. Was it three hours already? Hey, sorry guys, I promised the wife i clean up the garage. Gotta go. Hello again, gang. KR King here helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So what I gave in that intro was a slightly exaggerated uh, example of poor time management by a GM. You know, specifically in this example, not keeping track of how much time is left before the session has to end. And of course, in this example, the GM didn't realize this and stopped at the worst possible time. And of course, in time management in general, playing D&D, there's all sorts of pitfalls you can run into you know, when running a session. You know, if you start late or you take too much time getting things set up and going, you're running too slowly, uh, you know, players either in role playing or battles taking too long, you know, not recapping, players not ready to level up. And in fact, I've covered some of these time management issues in two previous videos on how to be a good GM and how to be a good player. But today I'm gonna drill down on some of the tactics I use to end sessions effectively which because this affects not only the end of the session, the players, you know, how much fun they have, do they feel like they were interrupted or didn't get things done, but it also sets up the anticipation and excitement for the next session. So I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can end a session such that the players don't feel, you know, cheated or frustrated. But first I wanna talk a little bit about my channel. Uh, the thing is I'm moving in a few weeks and you know, this tremendous background won't be here, be somewhere new. And in that process, it's gonna be hard. I'm gonna to try to maintain my weekly pace of videos, but I think I'm gonna do some mapping videos using uh, uh, Dungeon Draft and Wonder Draft, uh, possibly. Uh, these are things that I can quickly film the intros you know, in advance, and then I can shoot those, uh, screen record those wherever I happen to be. And you know, this moving process has screwed up my timetable. I have a bunch of things, uh, natural treasure, and also low-level magic items that I've been compiling for PDFs to you know, provide to you my faithful viewers and I, the time factors in terms of everything else and now moving. I'm working on that, I'm trying to get that going. But anyway, for now, let's get back to today's content. So the first thing, of course, you wanna think about in terms of managing your time and how you're gonna end a session is how long are you gonna play? I feel like the average session is usually three to four hours. Now, if you're getting together with a group, say, you know, at a cabin for the weekend or something, or, you know, you're all together for a set time, it might be six to eight hours, right? And you might have a situation, say, at a game store where you have a limited amount of time to have a table, that might be two hours. But typically, it's gonna be three to four hours, and that's kind of based on how much time people have to commit to it, and then, you know, how soon fatigue sets in. And you know, I say three to four as a provisional time because oftentimes when you get together, you say we're gonna play for three and maybe four depending on what happens, right? If things, if we're right in the middle of things and we wanna keep going, we can go up to four hours. But of course, eventually you're going to run out of times. Somebody, either the GM or one or two of the players is gonna say, look, I, I gotta leave. So the thing you wanna do is always be set at the half hour period right before you know you're gonna break Either it's the agreed upon time or you've gone extra, but you know, you know, we're not going to go more than four hours so that you can, you know, think about how you're going to end the session and use some, some strategies for that. All right. So the classic, you know, strategy for ending game sessions is the safe place. And this is usually a town, you know, or a keep. 
some place where the players can go and they can have a safe and comfortable place to go to sleep, take a long rest without fear of being attacked or having to set up watches. Now, that's not always the case with towns, just as the hobbits uh, when they went to Bree. But, you know, generally it's safe. You know, and when you end a session in a safe place, the nice thing is it gives the players a sense of accomplishment. Even if it's just we traveled from point A to point B and didn't get killed. You know, or they've run through some set piece of an exploration or just a monster hunt or something, and now they can go back to town, you know, count up their booty, maybe make some purchases or whatnot, and just know, okay, mission accomplished. So what you want to do is you think about, you know, in terms of the three or four hour session, setting it up such that it's realistic that the players find a safe place to end without altering the flow or logic of your game. And I give that caveat of flow or logic, it's very important. And by flow, I mean, if you make it such that suddenly the, you know, deadly road through the Mirkwood Forest is free of bandits and monsters such that the players move the 50 miles back to town in the last five minutes of the session, you know, they're going to know something's up. What you have here is the players seeing the man behind the curtain too clearly. Because what you're doing is you're altering the way your world works in deference to real time, you know, the playing session. So then if they're, you know, they got to go to some village to warn the villagers and they got to go through those 50 miles and it takes forever to hack their way through all the monsters, you're like, you know, the last time we did this, we ran into none. You know, and you have to be careful about also the logic of suddenly there's a safe place to hide where it shouldn't. If the players are, you know, deep down in some mega dungeon and it's the end of the game session and you provide a totally safe room where they can take a long rest, you know, it's not really realistic. So what you want to do, if you're not going to have them end just in place, whether it's, you know, in a hallway or they, you know, they checked out a room, there's nothing there, but we're going to start right up where they left off, you know, create a, you know, a safe room that's logical. You know, maybe there's a secret door that Inside the room, it has a latch, you can open it, but the players know that outside, even though they picked it or whatever, when it's shut, the secret door is on again. Okay, that makes sense. They can rest there. We can end the session. And the thing is, if this discovery of this room doesn't come at the end of the session, you hope that, you know, when it is time, they may, they'll know enough to go back there, you know, to have a safe room. Maybe you have to get them a little hint on, you know, that might be a safe place to rest. And the thing is, if they just keep going and going and going such that they want to go back to that safe room in the last five minutes, you know, you can set up a random, you know, wandering monster or some attack and say, oh, we got to stop here. Because what you're trying to do is don't let them manipulate and say, oh, he'll let us go the, you know, 50 miles through the Mirkwood Forest effect uh, to get us to a safe place in the dungeon. You know, and does this make them feel good knowing they're about to have some battle? Well, no, but they'll learn a lesson. Hey, if you're going to go back to the safe room, we're going to use the same rules that apply any other time we're working our way through the dungeon. So the big battle thing leads to another classic ending strategy for a session, the cliffhanger. So this is either right before a big battle or, you know, encounter or afterwards the players, you know, they've got players that are dead or whatever and, you know, some, the group is in deadly danger. So cliffhangers can be fun, but you have to be very careful about how you use them because if you stop the game right before a big battle, you lose any surprise or, you know, game mechanic tension that occurs when it's happening right when they discover it. You know, the players have a week or more or however many days between the session to discuss things, possibly look up monster stat blocks. And so, you know, you'll see this if, if when you start up the game again, they immediately know exactly what to do. Whereas in a real game session, that might not occur. And, you know, if you use cliffhangers too much, the players you know, don't like this necessarily. You know what? It's five minutes to go and you're surround us with 10 ghouls. Come on. Because what can happen there is the players all just say, hey, listen, we'll stay a half hour, an hour, whatever, to resolve the ghoul battle. And if you as the GM say, oh, I have to stop right now again, well then why did you give this this battle? So what you always want to make sure is with a cliffhanger is that it's born out of the players making a conscious decision to go that extra mile, do that encounter, enter that room, whatever, and not you as the GM just forcing it on them because there's five minutes left. You know, and what you do is you establish, you know, your time management strategy as you play the game. Maybe at the half hour session before, you know, half an hour before the game's gonna end, you just tell the players, okay, we got half an hour to go. So, you know, depending on what you wanna do, uh, you know, if you wanna start, you know, some encounter, we're gonna have to stop right before that encounter. They'll know this, they'll be prepared for it. And this leads to the no information cliffhanger. What this means is the players insist they want to keep running right up to the end, 
you get to something, it's five minutes to go or whatever, and you say, you know what? Something is going to happen, but it's too complicated to run in this session. I'm not going to give you any information. We're just going to stop here, and we're going to you know, resume right where we left off uh, before this event. So this lack of information will cause tremendous tension throughout the week, and the there's nothing the players can do about it. They can't research anything. They might have some ideas. There might be some clues if they you know, see the surrounding terrain or what the walls of the dungeon or the area they're in. But again, they don't really know. And again, that tension wouldn't be there if you had another hour to play. They would just trigger this thing and there you go. Now, here again with the unknown cliffhanger, you got to be careful because don't fall into the trap of saying this at the end of a session and then when we get together the next time you say, uh, they go in, the room's empty. It was nothing. Ha ha ha. Well, no, they're not going to appreciate that. You had us on pins and needles all week and you were just, you know, BSing. You know, and then there were no consequences for the players to insist on running right up to the end of the session. And you're not punishing them for running up that last, you know, minute of the session or whatever. You're just saying, look, if you're going to continue to run, uh, we had a logical stopping time and you go, no, no, we want to keep going right to the end. There could be consequences. You may have an encounter that we have to stop. I'm not going to say anything about it and we'll start it when we, you know, go the next week. So now you have the big event ending in which the players have defeated uh, some villain they've been after for many, many sessions, or they, you know, release the trapped spirit, and you end and, you know, maybe you have experience and treasure, but, but that's the end of the session. But in my experience as a GM, the big event endings rarely, you know, coincide with the set period of time that you've allotted to play the session. And what usually happens if you're determined to, you know, end at the end of a big event is if you're going to go over another hour or so, things can start to get rushed. You know, you can make decisions as a GM that you wouldn't if you had all the time in the world to play out this. And, and your ideas, I mean, you work so hard on this villain or this, you know, the lost temple or whatever. Why, you know, hurt yourself by trying to rush things? But what happens is you keep going and going and people start to go, you know what, guys, I really have to leave. I've got to stop playing and it can really suck. And then, of course, the other thing is if you end a session early, let's say after two hours, because the big event has been resolved, you know, the quality of that big event may be great, but, you know, you've lost an hour of playing time. And don't forget, your players have, you know, changed their schedules. They've slotted out the three hours or whatnot. You know, they're going to be like, well, can't we just play another hour? So for me, you know, the big event ending works best if you've said this session, we're going to do the big event. We're going to take it two and maybe it'll go four, whatever. But when it's over, we'll end. And in fact, then you have, if it goes two hours, you've got time to decompress, you know, again, examine the treasure Think about what you're going to do, you know, go over what happened and this sort of thing. Because again, if it takes four hours, maybe some of the players will want to sit and decompress and talk about it. But if you've got people that, hey, four hours was my limit, let them go. Because the thing is, you know, it's another big marker or whatever for the campaign that's resolved. And so the final ending point, you know, which is many times as you know, familiar as the, you know, safe place is just stopping in place. Wherever they are, when the session has to end, it's time freezes. When you come back the next time, we start up as though no time has passed. You know, and it's good to, you know, tell the players in your session zero that if we do run up against time, someone has to go. We're just going to stop in place and start again. And obviously this works best when the players are just, you know, traveling through the wilderness or they're going down a hallway, they're in an empty room. Doesn't work really if they're right in the middle of a battle. You know, what you want to do there, if they're going to get into a battle, just stop a little bit early with a cliffhanger, whether it's, you know, information or not. Because you are breaking the flow and logic of the game when you stop in the middle of a battle and everyone has a week or so to think about what they're going to do. And again, you can see this. The players have you know, talked about it, perhaps looked up a monster, this and that, and their tactics are going to change. They wouldn't have had that opportunity if you just kept going in game time. You know, and even if the players are totally honest about, you know, not looking up the monster or whatever or talking to each other, you know, when you have your recap sort of here's where we are and whatever, the players are going to possibly say, here are my spells, whatever. And you can tell they've thought about this because, of course, they love the game and they're going to think about it. And the thing is, you wouldn't stop the battle in, a, in the middle to have a recap like that. So don't do it, you know, in terms of ending your session. So what you want to do for a good stop in place is when you get to that half hour point, you ask the players, okay, it looks like half an hour. Everyone says, yeah, we want to stop. So think about where they're going to be and make sure that they're stopping somewhere where nothing is going to happen. Even if you have to push something out, you know, again, if they're in a dungeon, this can be tricky. But, you know, even if you have to say after 15 minutes, you know what, guys, let's stop right here. Uh, I just want to make sure that everything runs smoothly. They're not in any kind of in imminent danger, although they'll suspect they are. 
because you don't want to just force a cliffhanger because what happens is they seem you know hokey and contrived and then you lose the impact when you have a real cliffhanger so there you have some ideas on ending your session i hope they're helpful if you like my content please subscribe i'm always looking for more please leave from some comments as my you know faithful commenters know i always answer them and of course most importantly my friends keep playing D and tell somebody else about it